Welcome to 11.1. We're looking at circumference and arc length. Our essential question is how do I find arc length and other measures? So you are familiar with circumference. You remember that uh, the circumference is the distance around a circle. You could call it the perimeter of a circle, but the special word for the perimeter of a circle is circumference. So starting at one point on the circle, if you were to take a tape measure and wrap it around your circle, uh, the distance starting at one point and going all the way around and back to that same point, that is your circumference. We use the capital C as our variable for that. <clears throat> And you will remember that the definition or that the equation for circumference is either pi times d, where d is your diameter. Remember, the diameter is a chord going from circle to circle, but it goes through the center. So pi times d, or you could use the equation 2 pi r, where r is the radius going from the center to any point on the circle. Okay, so what is this pi thing all about? And you know, of course, that it is a number, a particular number, that's approximately 3.14 and approximately 22 over 7 is another way of representing that. But specifically and exactly, it is the number <clears throat> that is the ratio of the circumference divided by the diameter. So any circle at all, all you, in order to find pi, you just take the circumference, the distance around it, and divide that number by its diameter. And you will get this crazy number, 3.14, and it goes on forever and ever with no pattern and no end. And we get that from here. So if we were to uh, take this equation and divide both sides by the diameter, pi is equal to the circumference divided by the diameter. So let's put this stuff to use. <clears throat> Here is a particular example that we can look at. And they are asking us to find the indicated measure. <clears throat> and when I have a circumference, they want us to find the circumference of a circle when the radius is nine centimeters. So in other words, they want us to find the circumference when you have your radius. Hey, I'm not sure if I explained this. I'm pretty sure I did not. That we have two different equations for the circumference because they mean the same thing. Uh, we can either say pi times d <clears throat> or 2 pi r. And the reason for that is because the, di the diameter is equal to 2 times the radius. So in this particular situation, they are giving us the radius and they want us to find the circumference. So they're giving us the radius, they want us to find the circumference. So we would start by, by writing out the equation for circumference in terms of the radius and then plug in what we know. We know the radius is nine, so plug in nine for r and we wanna find the circumference. And so we simply uh, multiply. You know that the operation between the 2 and the pi is multiplication. So we can commute these two numbers together. 2 times 9 equals 18. And so the circumference is exactly 18 pi. Or if you wanted to make that into a decimal, you would say 18 times and hit the pi button. So do not use 3.14 or do not use uh, 22 over 7. Remember those are approximations. So make sure that you use the exact button or the exact number by hitting the button uh, on your um, your calculator. So 18 times pi would give you approximately, when, when you rounded it to the nearest hundredth, uh, 56.55. Here's another problem though. <clears throat> they give us the, they want us to find the radius and they give us the circumference. So how would we do that? Well, use the same equation where we have both radius and circumference together. And in this case, we plug in the uh, circumference of 26, and then we solve this for the radius. 
And so how do we do that? Well, you know, the, the 2 pi is related, connected to the radius through multiplication. The inverse operation of multiplication is division. <clears throat> so we would divide both sides of this equation by 2 pi. And so the radius is equal to exactly 26 over 2 pi. Or you could reduce that and say it would be, what, 13 uh, over pi. That would be an exact number. But then uh, if you wanted to use uh, find a decimal, then uh, do 13 divided by, and then push pi on your calculator. And when you rounded it, it you would have uh, 4.14. So you are ready now to do number one in your uh, on your notes uh, here. The first one, there's two different problems here. The first one is they want you to find the circumference when the diameter is five. So of course you don't you do not want to use this equation uh, 2 pi r you want to use the pi d equation so just plug in the diameter into the equation there and then there's also a second part here find the diameter of a circle with circumference 17 feet so they give you the circumference and they want you to find the diameter so use the same equation uh, circumference equals pi times d uh, plug in what you know for the circumference the 17 and then solve this for the diameter by dividing both sides by pi. And when you <clears throat> when you uh, solve this, uh, do it in terms or round it to the hundredths place. Round to the hundredths place. So that's our assumption. Uh, make sure that it is written first of all in terms of pi. That's what this is here, 18 pi. That is the number in terms of pi. The circumference of that particular circle is 18 pi. But then also, uh, like they do here, uh, give the, um, the number of the decimal, the number in terms of, uh, what, what am I saying? <laughs> give the number as a decimal rounded to the nearest hundredth. Okay. Let's look now at the second part of these notes. And, oh, actually, no, wait, 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 wait. There's another example. So go ahead and pause the video <clears throat> and uh, do those two. Uh, do problem number one, which has two parts uh, there on your notes. But let me get you ready for question number two here in your notes. And they're talking about a tire uh, here, and they're asking... Uh, for how far does the tire travel when it makes 15 revolutions? So if you were to take this tire and roll it so that it rolled over, uh, did a complete revolution 15 times, how far would this tire roll uh, down the road? And we do that by determining what the circumference of this tire is and then multiplying that circumference times 15. So how do we find the circumference using these measurements? Do I use 15? Nope, don't do that. That is the circumference of the rim. It is the circumference of the entire wheel that we are uh, looking for. So, um, not, I said circumference, and yeah, yeah. We want the circumference of the entire wheel. To find that, we need the diameter of this entire wheel. So in this case, we would add these three numbers together and that would be the diameter of this uh, wheel and then we would plug that number so here the diameter is 26 uh, inches when we add those uh, three numbers together and then plug that diameter in to this equation to be able to find your circumference and again make sure that you have double squiggles meaning that it's approximately because you have rounded this number it would be exactly 26 pi but they're asking for it in term or rounded to the nearest a hundredth place. And the second part of this, so this is the circumference of uh, the tire. Now what they're asking for is how far would this tire travel uh, if it was to go through 15 revolutions. So you take that, uh, the one circumference of 81.68 and then multiply it times the number of revolutions. In this particular case, you get that number as the total distance traveled. Now, that's a huge number in terms of inches, so let's convert that. 
And it's really important to know how to do conversions here. So let's take 1,225.2 inches and convert it into feet. And you know that one foot is the same thing as 12 inches. And so in this case, we want to get rid of the inches. So we put the inches uh, in the denominator so that when we multiply this whole number times the fraction, if you wanted to, you could think of it as putting a one underneath this. And now you have inches divided by inches, which is one that cancels out. And you're left with only the units of feet. So how do you find the number of feet? You take that number 1,225.2 and then divide it by, that's your fraction bar, divide it by 12 and you would get 102.1. I've done a, a little units conversion uh, here that you might want to put into your notes also just to remind you how to do this. So let's say that we started, focus that, let's say we started with 24 inches and we wanted to convert it to feet. So you would have, we know that this is your conversion factor, or ratio really, conversion ratio. We know that one foot equals 12 inches, so we want the inches in the denominator so that it will cross out with feet. If you, I probably should have done that, huh? I probably should have put um, two feet. Let me do that real quick. Uh, if you start with two feet, and you want to, of course, yeah, each person has two feet. Most people have two feet. <laughs> but if you had two feet, two feet as a distance and you wanted to convert that to inches, how would you do that? You would use the same conversion factor, but you need the reciprocal of that. So let's make it 12 inches over one foot so that when we multiply this, these feet will cancel out. Actually, the one stays there. But the uh, units of feet cancel out, and we're left with 2 times 12 which is 24 inches, okay? So I'm sorry, I should have squished all that in there together. So to make it clear how to go back and forth. So you use the same conversion ratio, but you put the denominator, or put the units in the denominator that you want to cancel out so that you're left with the units in the numerator. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and you are ready for number two. Now let's look at the arc length. And the arc length is a portion of the, the circumference, a portion of this entire circle. And as, we, as you remember, we did, uh, I gave you an introduction to this right before our last test. And what we do is we create a proportion. And our basic setup is part over whole. The part is this uh, part of the entire circumference. So the arc length of arc AB over the whole, and your whole would be the circumference all the way around this uh, circle. And that ratio is equal to the same ratio of the measure of this arc. You remember that the measure of this intercepted arc is the same as the measure of the central angle uh, over the whole uh, measure of the circle, or the measure of the whole circle. Okay, so this is your proportion uh, right here. And then if you wanted to solve this for the arc length, what you would do is multiply uh, both sides of this proportion times 2 pi r. And yes, you could do a cross multiplication, but it's easier uh, if you want to solve for the orange here uh, to multiply both sides by the blue. And then it'll cancel out on the left-hand side, and you're left with this. So the arc length of a particular arc is equal to the measure of that arc over 360 times the whole circumference. And so remember, this right here is the fraction of the whole circumference that you want. So in this particular case, if this uh, measure was 80, then we want 80 uh, over 360. That's our the fraction of the whole of the circumference that we, that we are wanting to get. So let's actually do a few problems before I cut you loose to do your own. So here they are asking us to find the arc length of AB when we have a radius of 6 centimeters and we have a central angle of 60 degrees. So you know the measure of the arc will also be 60 degrees. So to find the arc length of AB, 
we, here's the fraction of the entire circumference that we want. So 60 over 360, and then times the circumference. And the circumference is 2 pi r, in this case the radius is 8 centimeters. And when you multiply all that stuff, you get approximately, when you round it to the nearest hundredth, uh, approximately 8.38. Here's another one. Same principle. We want to find the length of this arc measure. And so we want 60 degrees out of the, or 60 degrees of the 360. How would you say that? I'm kind of stumbling over how to say that. I think you say 60 of 360 of the uh, entire circumference. Or maybe 60 over. 60 over 360 of the entire circumference. And we're using the radius of 11 in this particular situation. And this last one is exactly the same deal. We want to find the length of this arc. So that is 120 over 360 of the entire circumference, which is 2 pi times the, the radius. So you're ready to do number three here. You want uh, PQ, so you want this, uh, the length of this arc, so it's going to be 75 over 360 of, and this 9 yards, because it's right on top of the center there, it's referring to the, the diameter. So it'd be 75 over 360 of pi times the diameter, which in this case is 9. So that's what you want to write down here. And for this one, you want the circumference of the entire circle. Okay, so we're going kind of backwards there. So let me give you examples of how to do that. When they are giving you the, the central angle, the measure of the central angle, and the length of the arc, uh, and they want you to go backwards to find the entire circumference, what you do is use uh, the initial uh, proportion that we started with. So this proportion here on the left side, this one uh, here, uh, where you have the part over the whole equals the part over the whole. That's the proportion that you want to start with. And you can always start with that proportion. If you were to start with that proportion here, but want to get the arc measure, uh, arc length, uh, then you just multiply both sides by the circumference. Okay, so this is the standard that you should have in your mind, but then you can adapt it uh, as is necessary. So here's the standard that we want to use, this proportion, and we fill in what we know and then solve for what we need to know. So in this case, we know that the measure of the central angle, measure of arc xy, is 40 degrees. So plug that in. And then we also know that the length of arc axy is uh, 4.9. So here is our proportion. The only thing we do not know is the circumference. And probably the easiest way to think of this is to cross multiply. Okay, so multiply 4.19 times 360, and that equals C times 40. And then you'd multiply both sides by 40, or sorry, divide uh, both sides by 40 in order to solve for uh, C. They do it uh, a little bit different way here. What they did here was to reduce this fraction 